Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is free fall and Newton's second law. Here's the question we wish to answer. Why does the free fall acceleration of an object not depend upon the mass of the object? Let's get started. Before I begin, let me make a comment about our next video in this series because I think it should be watched together with this video. It's called Air Resistance and Terminal Velocity and it discusses falling under the influence of air resistance. In this video, we're talking about free fall, falling under the sole influence of gravity. That is, air resistance is so minimized it has zero effect upon the object that we can approximate the object as falling under the influence of just one force and that force being the force of gravity. So when we think about free fall, we're thinking about objects maybe that are moving at low speeds and that have rather aerodynamic profiles such that air resistance is minimized and not affecting the object and this is the free body diagram for such an object. I'm going to begin with a demo and then this demo will cycle right through the video of the demo. What we're going to do is drop four markers in one marker and ask the question which falls faster, the four marker system or the one marker? Now taped right to the center of the four marker system is some duct tape. You'll see it's gray and to the one marker system there's some duct tape. This duct tape represents the center of mass of the two objects. Now we've chosen a marker because a marker tends to be aerodynamic, that is, air streamlines around the marker with have, without having a whole lot of effect upon the motion of the marker. As such, the marker is a free-falling object. Now, if you watch this little video over and over again, one thing that you'll notice is despite having four times the mass, the four-marker system is falling at the same rate as the one-marker system. The acceleration of each object is the same, irregardless of the mass of the object. Here are two videos being played, and both of these videos are occurring in a vacuum. And when you do a video in a vacuum, or a phenomenon in a vacuum, you know that there's no air. A vacuum is a region void of air. And with no air, there's no air resistance. And as such, the only force is gravity, and we're guaranteed that we're watching a free-falling object. And here on the moon, the astronaut drops a hammer and a feather, and they both fall at the same rate. And here in the vacuum chamber, the other video from the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, you're watching a bowling ball and a feather, and they're both falling at the same rate. And we'd like to encourage you to watch the four-minute video uh, of, the, of the video from the BBC. We have the link to it in the description section, and it's worth watching. The idea of both videos is that the acceleration of a free-falling object does not depend upon the mass of the object. I've done one lab for several years now with my students with the objective of determining whether or not mass affects acceleration. So students take balls of varying mass as they drop the balls and they determine the acceleration using a video camera and a video analysis software. Here's results from a recent year. Acceleration is plotted along the vertical axis and mass is along the horizontal axis. The question is, what's the pattern that develops between acceleration and mass? Is it quadratic? I don't think so. Is it linear? with a positive slope or linear with a negative slope? No, I don't really think so. Now one of the problems is there's several outliers here in the data set, but what you'll notice is that many of the data points fall right around 10 meters per second squared plus or minus about one or two meters per second squared. And you especially notice this pattern as you get out to 100 grams and greater. You notice that there's this Non -con this constant relationship between acceleration and mass. That is to say that the mass of an object seems to have very little effect upon the acceleration when it's in free fall. In fact, the accelerations of these objects tend to be right around 10 meters per second squared regardless of the mass. So we've seen through several examples that the mass of an object does not affect the acceleration. But let's ask the question why. Why is it that mass has no effect upon acceleration? And this is where Newton's second law comes in. The acceleration is the ratio of the net force to the mass. So let's take two objects with extreme differences in mass, like an elephant in a feather. If we look at the net force acting up on the elephant, it's quite large, particularly when you compare it to the feather. The, 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 the net force is simply the force of gravity, and for the elephant it's a big M multiplied by 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and for the feather it's a little m multiplied by 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So you'd think right away that, that the net force is going to be much greater for the elephant. Maybe it should accelerate with a greater acceleration. But then we have to also consider the mass of these two objects. So when we look at the elephant, we have to take the numerator, m times g, and divide it by m. And the m's would cancel out, and we would have an acceleration 
equal to 9.8 newtons per kilogram or 9.8 meters per second squared. When we do the same thing for the feather, despite its small net force, you're dividing that value by a very small mass. And when you do, you end up getting the value g again for the acceleration, the 9.8 meters per second squared. So what we notice is the ratio of net force to mass is the same for both of these objects. In fact, if the only force is gravity, that's always the case that the acceleration comes out to be 9.8 meters per second squared, a value that we sometimes refer to as the acceleration of gravity. So here's the line of logic that leads to the conclusion that free fall acceleration is independent of mass. For a free falling object, the only force is gravity, and the value of that force is calculated by going mass times g, where g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. This is the net force, m times g. Now the acceleration is the ratio of the net force to the mass, which turns out to be this m times g divided by the m. And since the mass cancels, the acceleration ends up being simply g, regardless of what the mass value is. If you put numbers in for the elephant, this is kind of a small sized elephant, a thousand kilograms, you end up with a gravity force of 9,800 9, newtons, and then you divide that by a thousand kilograms, and you end up with 9.8 newtons per kilogram, or 9.8 meters per second per second. Okay, let's do a quick check for understanding. Here's six true false statements, and why don't you determine which one of these are, whether these are true or false. Pause the video, take some time to look them over, study them, write down some answers, and we'll get back to you in a moment. Pause the video and press play when you're ready. Okay, let's see how you did. Here's the, the six statements, and wouldn't you know, they're all false. And they're false for one reason or another. And in this little slide, we've, we've identified the part of the statement that is false by crossing it out. The core idea in this video tutorial applies to situations involving freefall, objects under the sole influence of gravity. This core idea is that all objects freefall with the same acceleration despite any difference in their mass. But there's a second idea not covered in this video, but covered in our very next video. And it's the idea that when falling in the, under the influence of air resistance, mass really does matter. And you'll notice that if you watch the motion of the four filters versus the one filter, with the four filters being on the left and the one filter being on the, on the right, with four times the mass in the presence of air resistance, we observe that they fall at different rates. So free falls is sort of like this idolized situation that we observe being uh, being most closely matched whenever objects are traveling with low speeds, maybe have uh, aerodynamic properties and in, in, in are rather massive, but not by coffee filters. So tune in to our next video where we talk about the influence of air resistance in the concept of terminal velocity. It's at this time in every video I'd like to help you out with a series of next steps in order to make the learning stick, an action plan. But before I do help you out, could you help us out? Maybe you could like the video or if you enjoyed it, uh, maybe subscribe to our channel or even leave a comment or a question in the area down below. Now for your action plan. We have a series of apps with the physics classroom. You'll find the, the link to our apps in the description section down below. And one of the apps is app number two and on it there are three modules with the first module being called Newton's Law of motion. And in that module, you'll notice there's a mission in L10. Just a perfect follow-up for this video. Second, on our website, we have a section called the Multimedia Physics Studios, and there's an animation there called The Elephant and the Feather, and it blends really well with this, vid with this uh, video tutorial. You'll see the link to that down below. Finally, there's a link down below to a tutorial page at our website on the topic of free fall and air resistance, and it goes really well both with this video and our next video in the series. Whatever you do, we wish you the best of luck.